from me. Why don't we welcome Pastor Dan. He is bringing the word this morning. Can we give him a big cheer? Thanks, Dan. So good. So good. Isn't there some great stuff happening? Isn't that cool? I love hearing about that. This album is going to be amazing. That's songs that some of our creative team have written in various seasons in the life of Hope Community right from the very beginning. And so these are really prophetic declarations that God's been speaking over our church since the very start. So um, that's going to be amazing. There's something big in that. And I mean, who doesn't get excited about prayer and fasting, right? Yes. (laughs) I shouldn't say that, should I? Like, I should be the one who's like, yes, it's a really spiritual thing. Yet I'm always praying, Lord, please, not coffee. Don't let it be coffee. There's some truth right there for you, but but pray into it. What's the Lord leading you to do? 20 days, it's it's, um, a season for breakthrough in that time. And maybe God's already leading you in a certain direction and you know straight away exactly what he's calling you to do that season without uh, I'll pray for you that it's not coffee. Maybe it's coffee. Uh, who knows Who knows what it is, but we believe that that's something personal. Seek the Lord on that and uh, then join us for this season as we press into vision and it's going to be a beautiful lead up to Easter as we celebrate uh, the resurrection of the King as well and finding life in Him. So don't miss out on this. I know it's easy to think, hey, fasting is not for me. Um, and trust me, like I would be happy to never fast again in my life, right? That's that's where I'm at with fasting, but I know the Lord wants me to do it and I'll be there and I hope that you'll come on that journey with us as well. So you've got a good week to pray about it and then we'll be launching in that following Monday after next Sunday, as Pastor Tam said. Hey, I'm going to get into the message. I'm going to share um, today something. I caught up with some pastors this week. And um, the senior pastor of Gateway, Jason Ellsmore, who is also now the head of Queensland Baptist Churches, he spoke there and I really loved what God was saying in that space. So I've pretty much just stolen his message and reframed it to suit what God is speaking to our church right now. So I'm sure Jason will be tuning in on Instagram so he can watch me preach his message this morning and he would have done it a thousand ways better. But um, This is the word I really believe that God's speaking to us in this time of season. So I'm just going to pray and then we're just going to get straight into it this morning. So Father, we just welcome you. Uh, We've worshipped you. We've set our hearts on you. And so this morning, we just pray, Holy Spirit, come and speak in this time. And Lord, we want your eyes. We want to be able to see the way that you see. God, we want to see what you have for our lives. We want to be able to see who you're calling us to be, Father. We want to hear those words of our identity that you declare over us, Father. And so I pray that even in this time this morning, that you're just speaking into every heart in this room, Father, that we're receiving, that we're open to what you're saying, God, and that in that place there's a real ministry of transformation taking place in this room, Lord. And we just want to just declare your truth, just reigns in this place, Father, where we've aligned with untruths, Father. We pray for alignment today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, all right, we're in this um, in this season of vision, and over the next few weeks, you're going to be hearing a lot about vision and what it looks like. Um, more specifically, we're going to be talking about God's vision and what God's vision actually means for us. And so next week, we'll be taking the time to talk about what that looks like for us as a church. But today, I wanted to talk about what it looks like for you and I. What does God's vision look like for you and I? And I want to just start, like I want to go deep right here, okay? So just get ready for this. I want to start by asking you a question, and you're going to have to think, and you're going to have to really engage in this space for me. And I I want you to literally, this is a question I want you to talk about. When you get in the car and you're on your way home, this is a question I want you to continue to talk about with whoever you're with, okay? And the question is this, what is God's vision for your life? That's a big question, right? What is God's vision for your life? What is God's vision for your marriage? Uh, What is God's 
vision for your job, your career, your kids, your education, uh, your finances, your relationships, uh, your faith. What is God's vision for those things in your life? And here's the second question. Here's the follow-up question. Is am I living out that vision right now? Could you say yes today that you are in a space where you feel you are actually living out the vision that God has for you at this point in time? So I'm going to clarify more what this looks like as we go, but I really want you to start pondering that question and just where you're at. And I know there's going to be some people who are here today and you're going to be thinking already that you have a really clear picture on what God has for your life and there's going to be other people who are here today and you're going to be thinking I just don't have a clue right and if that's you that's don't be worried about that in any way because there's a number of people in the room today who may be feeling that way and some of you are thinking look when it comes to life like I wake up in the morning I get that coffee and then I just want to survive right This is my life. And I invite God into that, but I'm just like, I'm just going with the flow. And that's what life looks like for me. And some people, they have no idea. And and you you desperately, you desperately want to know what God actually has for you in this season. And maybe it's so desperate, like you just feel completely lost. You feel like you have no purpose in life. And maybe even attached to that, you feel like, like God doesn't care. And like when you're going to him and you're trying to find these answers that uh, he's not actually speaking to you about this. And I, I, my hope and my prayer is that you will get something out of this today. But here's what I really want you to know today is that you can know God and you can still live your own life. But when you start to live the life that he has for you, that's when you really start to get to know God. And that is the relationship that God actually desires for each one of us every single day. This is what he's looking for. So we're going to jump into some scripture this morning. Grab your Bibles, open them up to Matthew 17. We are going to look at a really epic passage this morning. Matthew 17, starting at verse 1. It says, six days later, Jesus took Peter and the two brothers, James and John, and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here if you want. I'll make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now, I'm going to stop there. You've got to get your head in this straight away, right? Um, Here's these guys. They are following Jesus up the mountain. This incredible thing happens in this space is that for a moment, they get to actually glimpse the glory of Jesus. And so they've known him in his human form, and for a moment they get to see him in his divinity, right? They get to see the glory of Jesus Christ. This is an amazing thing that is taking place right here. And I don't know about you, but um, I love climbing mountains. I love getting to the top of the mountain. Like my, To my wife, this sounds like madness, Right? Like I see a mountain and I just think I want to be on the top of that mountain. Whereas my wife will be like driving down the highway, you know, we'll see the Glasshouse Mountains out there. And she's like, I am happy for them to stay right there. You know, I've got two kids. They love to climb mountains as well. I've got a photo for you here today. Um, This is number one. This is Levi, my boy. Uh, He's standing on the top of, I think that's Mount uh, Gun Gun. And uh, so he loves climbing mountains. We do that every now and then. This is uh, my daughter, Eva, in this next pic. 
um, and she, I think that's Biwa, standing on top of Mount Biwa, and we climbed that together, and uh, I thought I was going to die every step of the way, and she was just laughing at me. So um, they love climbing mountains. My other daughter, not pictured here, and my wife, as I said, they are happy to never climb a mountain in their life, right? Um, do we have any mountain climbers in the room? Okay, how many people are happy not to climb a mountain? Okay, I, th I think that's the majority right there. You're going to have to work with me with this message today, okay? Um, but here they are. Here's Peter, James, and John. They find themselves on this mountaintop, and on this mountaintop, they have this incredible experience with Jesus. They get to see his glory. They get to see him for who he really is. And what's so powerful in this scene, this is kind of for the Bible geeks out there, okay? What's so powerful in this scene is that Moses turns up. Now, Moses represents the law and old covenant. Elijah turns up. Elijah represents the prophets whose ministry was to declare the coming of Jesus. And so here in this space is Jesus Christ standing with Moses, the law, the old covenant, the prophets who declared Jesus to come. And in that space, they are a witness to Jesus actually coming and Jesus saying, it is fulfilled in me. All right? Any Bible geeks who love that? Yeah. So this is, this is incredible. Okay? And we know that someone else was geeking out so much because... Um, who was it? Peter. He was like, man, this, like, he was just frothing on this. I'm going to build some shelters and we're just going to stay in this space. Like he could see that this is an epic moment. So I'm looking at this mountaintop experience and here's, here's what I really believe today. And I talk about this actually um, often, but I believe that we all actually need mountaintop experiences. And, and we've already worked out today that for most people here, that's not going to involve actually being on the top of a mountain, right? But the mountaintop experience is a symbol of the place where we step into the presence of God, where we encounter Jesus, where we encounter Him in a way that s some transaction takes place. It might be transformation, it might be breakthrough. It's something that changes us in that moment. This is the encounter that we're talking about. And one thing that I think is actually amazing about mountaintops is that you get away to these mountaintops and it, it gets you away from all the noise. And I think there's something in this, in that when you're on this mountaintop, Everything else seems to disappear, right? You can't hear the phone ringing. Okay, you can't hear, Dad, Dad, Dad. Uh, the emails, they're not coming through in that space. And so we get away to these places, these mountaintops, and suddenly we're able to hear better. We stand in the presence of God, and there we're able to hear His voice better. And I realize that for, for most people here today is that that mountaintop is going to look like a different place for you. And it might be um, a beach, walking along a beach. It might be walking through the bush or something like that. It might be just getting up early and, and getting that cup of tea and heading out and sitting on your deck, you know, and the birds are going and the sun's coming up and there's no dad, 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 yet. And you have that moment where you realize I can actually... I feel like I can hear God speaking to me right now. And you get these moments where you just get to say, Lord, speak. And there's something on your heart. You say, Father, I need you to speak into this. What do you have to say about this? And I want to get really real in this space today because you know what? I, I, I believe that we need these moments so much. Jesus needed these moments, right? He escaped so often to find these moments. And yet so many of us are living a life where these moments don't exist for us. And you've heard it spoken about so many times, and yet the reality is that it's not a part of your life. And I'm actually talking about us making these moments a priority in our life. 
just as we do, you know, we, we make time to go to the gym and we make time to go to work and we make time to do all these other things that we enjoy and, you know, our Netflix hours can rack up and things like that. And yet we know that there is power in the presence of Jesus and yet it hasn't become the reality in our life. And you know what? So many of us are saying, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I'm so busy. How have you been going keeping up with Jesus? I'm just so busy. I don't have time for that. And the reality is we've got all the time. It's just that we do not prioritize these moments. And my fear is that we live in a day and age where this hustle is so persistent and there are so many people who are completely lost and yet the solution is there and yet we continue to live in the hustle. And there are some people here today and you need to know that nothing is going to change until something changes right and it's not until you feel the pain of what of where you're actually at to a point where you realize something has to change that you're going to do something about it and i want you to hear me today this is something that is going to grow you so much so we need to find these mountain tops what are these mountain tops i remember pastor tam sharing um, in our hope at home series and actually preaching from one of those places that is at her mountaintop. It's this lake that she walks past in the morning, and she preached from that very spot. It's on YouTube still, and it's just this incredible, amazing backdrop. Like, it, it looked amazing, but it's a place where she just finds the peace of God, and in that place, she gets to hear from Him. And here's the truth, is that she's got to get up early in the morning to get there. Uh, I work with her every day, so I know she gets in the office early, and that means that she's got up really early to go and have that time, to go and be with the Father. So it is going to cost us something, but we've got to be prepared to pay this cost to actually meet with the Father in these places. Now, I am not saying that you cannot meet with Him in your bedroom, in your office, in your lounge or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying there's something so valuable and powerful about those times when we retreat and we get away and we're intentional. And we're thinking to ourselves, I need to hear the word of the Lord. I need to get into his presence. And I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to go and find a place where I do that. You know, I'm always amazed. We have these um, retreats often as part of the courses we run. And it will involve, it'll involve anyone who's doing a course actually getting away for a couple of nights. Um, we usually go, where's that place we go to? Brookfield. It's a beautiful place. And, um, you know, there's no traffic noise, like it's out in the middle of nowhere. And we get away there. And I'm amazed at what God does in those retreats. And I think one of the reasons that God moves so powerfully in those retreats is because people make the effort to actually set aside the time to actually be there. Like they've got a, it's a, it's a weekend, right? Like who's got a weekend free? But people have to say no to all these different things and get kids looked after and like work, work, work to be able to get onto this weekend. And you step foot on this property on the Friday night. And I'm speaking personally here, but I step foot onto that property and I feel like, oh, here you are, Lord. You've been waiting for me here and here I am. And time and time again, this is what people say. And I believe that God honors that effort so much. We all need these mountaintop experiences. I've shared before, but I had an incredible mountaintop experience when I was in the Solomon Islands years ago. Some locals took us up on this mountain. It's called their prayer mountain. It's where they go to pray over as far as they can see. They go up there and they pray. And we took our team up there and something happened as we got up onto the top of that mountain. We started to worship and pray. The presence of God came and fell on us on top of that mountain. And there was 15 or 20 of us there and everyone ended up uh, on the ground just crying out to the Lord. It was the most incredible thing. It was one of those situations where you walk back down from the mountain and no one's talking because everyone's just like, oh my goodness, what just happened? We need these mountaintop experiences. What does your mountaintop look like? Where do you encounter God 
and hear his heart? Where do you find his presence? Because when you find his presence, you're going to start to hear the vision that he has for your life. And it's going to look different for everyone. I know that some people here, you feel like you've got a calling on your life and it's for your whole life. And that's awesome. It's great when people get that. Some people here, you feel like I've got a bit of a vision for what God's doing in this season right now. And other people feel like you've got a bit of a calling, but God's only shown you maybe what this year looks like. And so it comes in bits and pieces at times. And for some people, it's often just going to be that there's a calling that exists, but God only gives you a season of that at a time where you actually get a sense of what he's calling for or how he's leading you. But here's the thing. We need his direction, right? Let me keep reading in this passage. It says, um, even as he spoke... A bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples were terrified and fell face down on the ground. Jesus came over and he touched and he touched them. Get up, he said, Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus. As they went back down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. So here's the thing, you can't stay on the mountaintop forever. At some point, the vision requires action. And all the doers in the room are like, yeah, we love that. We love doing things. We are not talking about a works-based salvation here, okay? So don't hear that for a second. We are talking about living out the vision, the calling that God has on your life, all right? But there is a time for action. And we know that Peter was so excited. He said, let's build these shelters. Like he was like getting ready, like let's just stay in this place on the top of the mountain. And maybe you have desires like that at times, right? Like, Lord, I don't want to deal with the rest of the world. Can we just stay right here in this place forever okay but here's what i want you to know god has stuff for you to do right there is action that's required i want to define vision up a little bit for those who are kind of feeling like i'm not really understanding exactly what this looks like um, i'll put some definition around it and I'll, i want to i want to lead you to a couple of verses um, one is proverbs 29 this verse uh you've probably heard it said all different ways sometimes it's said without vision the people perish um in the nlt it says this when people do not accept divine guidance they run wild but whoever obeys the law is joyful so here's the first thing i want you to know is that we all need vision and vision is a supernatural revelation of god's heart so another passage that you'll know really well jeremiah 29 11 it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Now, this was a promise that God actually had for the exiles in Babylon, right? Um, Tim Sweetman talked about that a little bit last week. Uh, but this is also a promise that people, so many people find hope in because we actually know that it's true and that we can hold on to it ourselves. And the reason is that he is good, that he has a vision for our lives. He's got a future for us and the future is full of hope. And some people just need to hear that today. Um, God's vision for your life is his, pre his preferred future for your life. It may be helpful to think about it that way. For many people, God's vision is going to become fuel for their ministry. And so if you feel like um, God's just put this thing in me where I have this huge desire to see people saved, to come to know Jesus Christ, that vision is actually going to become the fuel for everything that you do. Out of that place is where you serve. Out of that place is where you find the motivation to live out the life that God is calling you to. So it's the why for what you do, okay? So maybe this morning you can look at what you're currently doing and then from there, look at why you're currently doing it. 
And that'll be a good way for you to actually understand. So am I actually doing what God is calling me to do? Or am I actually just reacting to life and just doing stuff? I'll just give you a picture of what that looks like. Um, So if you're a school teacher, a school teacher is what you do, right? But the vision that actually drives you in that, it may be something like God has called you to be a light to that community. That he has put something in your heart where you want to see young people grow um, in their education and in their faith. And so that's the vision that God has actually given you. And because he's given you that vision, you're a school teacher and that's what you do, right? Um, If you're here and you're someone who cares for the sick, God may have actually given you that vision that you have this compassion in your heart where you really feel for people who are in need and you actually want to help them and meet them in that space. And you just want to love on them unconditionally. When they can't do anything for themselves, you want to be there and you want to love on them in that space. Maybe that's the vision that God has given you. And maybe more than that, maybe God's actually given you an experience in life where you have felt that need to a great degree. And because you feel that need, the Father says we can use that to actually inspire your vision further. This is what I have for you. Now, these are just a couple of areas of of your life. Like there may be several visions for you. So God might be saying, as Pastor Tam shared this morning, that, you know, I have this um, incredible generosity and, and here's a vision for how I want you to handle your finances every single day. And here's a vision I have for your marriage. This is what I see for you guys. So God speaks into every area of our life. But here's what vision is not, okay? Vision is not the dreams that we have that we simply just ask the Lord to bless. Okay? And God has grace. Don't get me wrong. God has a grace for us where so often He meets us in these spaces that He hasn't called us into. But the vision is to find God's dreams, God's heart, And then we align ourselves with that and walk into that. I love this quote. It's a leadership quote. Um, Every second person has claimed this quote, so I I don't know who actually said it the first time. But it goes, most people overestimate what they can achieve in a year and underestimate what they can achieve in 10 years. So when we have vision, it means that we can actually be effective. We can actually be fruitful. It means that where there's planning required in our life, we can actually do that because we have a vision to plan from. All right? So sometimes planning, it sounds very unspiritual to people. They're like, man, I just follow the Holy Spirit. Whatever the Holy Spirit says, I'm there. And that's cool. I get that. I love that. We need to live that way. But there's a place for planning. I want you to hear this. If there's no place for planning... Um, the ark would have sunk, okay? Like Noah had some work to do. There was a vision and he had to actually get something built, right? And it needed to float or we wouldn't have kookaburras anymore, right? Um, Nehemiah rebuilt the walls. Like there was a plan to rebuild the walls. David built the temple, you know, like if, he, if there was no planning, if there was no planning that came out of the vision, it would still be a foundation, right? How many people have jobs around the house that are yet to be finished, okay? If we've got a vision, but there's, there's not really a plan in place to knock that one over yet. There is a place for planning and action. I want you to hear this, okay? So let's keep going. Jesus gets to the bottom of the mountain. I'm going to jump down a few verses here. Uh, they get, get to the bottom, there's this crowd waiting and, and they meet this man and he shares that his son has a demon that has been giving him seizures and the disciples weren't actually able to pray this demon out. And Jesus actually gets really upset here. Like we don't see Jesus get upset too many times in scripture, but this is one of those places. So in verse 17, it says, Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people how long must i be with you how long must i put up with you bring the boy here to me then jesus rebuked the demon in the boy and it left him from that moment the boy was well afterward the disciples asked jesus privately why couldn't we cast out that demon you don't have enough faith jesus told them 
I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. So here's what I want you to hear today is that to live out God's vision, you are going to need faith. You cannot live out God's vision without faith. Um, there was this guy and he was, he was climbing a mountain one day and he got to the top and he actually fell off the edge, right? And he was hanging on to this tree root and while he was hanging on there for dear life, he cried out and he was saying, is there anyone up there? He's just shouting out to get some help, you know. And this voice comes from heaven and it's God. And he says, hello, this is the Lord. He says, I want you to let go of the tree root. I've got you. And the man's there and he's holding on and he's thinking to himself. Takes a moment and then he says, is there anyone else up there? And here's the thing is that the vision God has for your life is going to require you to have great faith in what he can actually do. And if it doesn't, it's either too small for vision or it's your own vision because it's left God out of the picture. We need faith. And this passage to me is such an interesting passage because Jesus is actually saying to the disciples, like, you don't have enough faith. And then at the same time, he says, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, then you could tell that mountain to move, right? I find that, like, he, like was that a massive insult or what? Like, he's saying... Man, you, like you don't have any faith because it only takes that much to move a mountain and you got nothing. You couldn't sort this boy out, right? The Lord calls us to have faith in this area. We have to trust in what he is actually able to do. But the reality is that you, when you step into this vision that God has for your life, there are going to be mountains. There are going to be mountains that need to be moved and they're going to require your faith to see them move. I want you to actually just close your eyes right now. And I want you to just take a moment to picture what the mountain in your life might be right now. Maybe for some people you're feeling like, well, the mountain is that I am disconnected from the Father, that I need Him. I need to, I need to know Him to know this vision. Maybe for you it's that uh, you feel like you're too young, Maybe some people you feel like you're too old. Some people you feel like you're too, you're too new a Christian. You're not ready for this. Maybe some people you feel like you're just a complete failure. Some people maybe you feel like it's a relationship that's standing in your way. Maybe it's resources. Maybe it's some health issues. Whatever your mountain is this morning, it's going to require your faith to actually see that this mountain can be moved. And Jesus is saying that nothing is impossible for God. As I was praying about this this morning, I saw some people and you are here and you think that it's the end right now, but really you're just at the beginning. I saw some other people and you need to actually go back to God and you need to clarify your vision because you are frustrated because it's not working out, but you're heading in the wrong direction. I saw some other people and you are weary and you are waiting right now. And the truth is that you're in a season of delay. But the delay is actually God's grace to you because he's preparing you for something. And you need to trust in him and you need to actually embrace this season of delay because it's really important and it's really valuable what God's doing in this space. There are some people who are here this morning and I want you to hear this. You will not move forward until you find some healing. 
And I saw hearts and hands. It's both physical and emotional as well. And the place to find that healing is with the Lord, in His presence, that you need to get in His presence and you need to seek that healing. I'm going to get keys up and I'm just going to wrap up here. I I want you to know this morning, um, I know what it's like to have mountains. Sometimes like people just get this picture of pastors and for some reason they think that everything's cruisy and they think like we've got our halo on and life's all good and stuff like that. But I know what it's like to have mountains. And um, I remember back back in, in 2007, um, our pastor came to listen to I and, and he sat us down and he said, Dan, we actually want you to consider becoming a pastor and coming to work at the church. And uh, it's going to look like leaving your job. You're going to have to go to Bible college and study and we'll pay you two days a week here at the church while you work for us as well. And so um, that was one of those moments he left that night. We had a bit of a, a sense that God was leading us into leadership in some capacity. Um, but we knew that we needed to hear from God if we we're going to move forward with this. And so we started praying and we started praying and praying and really seeking God on this. We wanted to hear from Him. And the mountain in our way was finances because uh, we had nothing. We'd um, studied our whole lives and we'd done various things. But um, when it came to having assets and things like that, we had like we had nothing. We had uh, two old bomby cars that were practically dead. Uh, we still had cardboard boxes for bedside tables, right? We'd put tablecloths over them to make them look really nice, but they were cardboard boxes. Like we, we, had, we had nothing. And here we were, we were in this stage of life and we were thinking, uh, you know, we we're thinking about having a family and we're thinking about like, we'd ha- love to have a home one day. And we didn't, we're, like we're, we're not wired up to need all this stuff, but we were just thinking, Lord, like, there's just some basic stuff and what does two days a week look like? You know, how, how are we going to do this? And so we're praying, we're praying and we've got this mountain in the way. And as we prayed, there was this verse that came to us a few times. And it's incredible how in those seasons when you're seeking God, that this scripture, maybe you've read it a thousand times and it's just brushed by you, but when you're seeking the Lord in this way, a scripture can actually just jump out and it just connects with your heart. And it doesn't always make sense when it does, but it did for us. It was this verse from Matthew 10. And it says, Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. We did not have any gold or silver or copper. I can tell you that. It says, Take no bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff, for the worker is worth his keep. When we got this verse, we felt that the God that God was promising us that He would provide for us, that we were to step out in faith and trust Him. You know what's so funny is that I had been raised with this strong moral sense of being a provider. You know, um, I'd never been a provider in my life before that, but I still had that sense in my life. And this is where God was actually calling us to step step out, to say, leave that behind me and I will be your provider. And that was a very new thing for me. And so we did. We stepped out in faith. And from the very first day, from the day I was commissioned as a pastor, God started to provide for our family in miraculous ways. And I'm talking about checks in the mail. I am talking about God taking care of expensive dental bills, bills that we didn't have the money for. God has given us a home. God has given Hope Community a home. Like we have just seen God be so faithful in this place for us. But there was a mountain that we had to believe it could be moved. That we had to step out before we knew that the mountain was actually going to get moved. But sometimes, you know what? You don't really know if you have faith until there's a mountain in front of you that needs to be moved. You can think you've got all the faith that you need until that mountain is standing in front of you. So we need to hear God's vision. We need to do what He says and we need to move forward in faith. 
Now, one more time, I just want you to close your eyes and I want you to picture, if you're here this morning and you know what God's vision is for you in some way for this season or for an area of your life, I just want you to start picturing that vision in a way that if you could look ahead in time, what would that vision look like fulfilled? What could you see ahead? It might be your healing, it might be a new job, a new business, a completely new career. It might be your kids all grown up and following Jesus. It might be financial freedom might be the school kids that you've got to have an impact on. They're all living great lives and making an impact themselves. It might be the people that you've cared for, healed, whole, recovered, well, loved. It might be the relationship that's fixed, the church you planted, the ministry you started the village you've taken the gospel to, the neighbours you've loved. Here's my point. Here's the reason I want you to dream this way is because we cannot stay where we are. This vision is far too important. And I can promise you that right across this room this morning, people are picturing different things and God needs us in every one of those spaces. The vision is too important for us to stay where we are. The Father needs us to be stepping into these places. He needs us to be taking His love into these places. He needs us to be moving because there's stuff He wants to do in us as we move. And He has this vision. He has these callings. He has these desires for each one of us in this room today. And in that place, you can find purpose. You can find hope. You can find meaning. But in that place, you are going to find deeper things happening than you could ever imagine if you were to live your own life. While you've got your eyes closed, I'm just going to pray as I finish up. Lord, I just thank you for what you are doing in this moment. I thank you for vision that's even being revealed right now, Father, for eyes that are being opened, hearts that are being opened to what you're saying, to what you're releasing, to what you're speaking. Father, I pray that um, each one of us would have the boldness and the courage to do what you ask, to follow you, that there would be a desire in our heart to live that life, Lord. That in that place, there would be a strength a strength that holds us on that path where we look and we see other things that we may think that we are sacrificing or missing out on. There is a strength that holds us, God, because we know that the vision is far too important to leave, God. That you have created us, that there are things that you have put in us that are unique, Father, that you have a desire to work in us and through us, Lord. And Father, I pray that as individuals gathered here today, Father, that you would stir up audacious faith, Father, that we would start to believe that we can be powerfully used by you, God, that your promise to actually equip us is true, Father, that nothing can stand in front of us, that nothing will be impossible for you, that we can trust you, Father, that as we step into this space, lives are gonna be changed we are going to make a difference. This is not a hopeless case. There are people who are waiting for us today, Lord. There are communities that are waiting for the hope that is found in Jesus' name, and we are the people to take it to them. There are people who are so broken and so lost, who just need the love that we actually have in our hearts today, Father. 
There is an authority and a power that you have put inside of us, God, to actually command things to come in line with your will, Father, that people could be healed and set free, Father, that children could grow up knowing that they are loved by a Creator, Lord, that marriages could be mended and healed and made whole and step into new places, Father, that whole communities could be flipped upside down in Jesus' name, that problems of employment and lack could be cast aside, Father, that problems like addiction can be broken in Jesus' name as people find you and no longer need those things to hold on to, Father. The mission, the vision, the need is far too great, Father, for us just to stay here and do nothing, Lord, or to get caught up in our own dreams and desires. Father, light a fire in us today, I pray in Jesus' name. We pray that Hope Community will be instrumental in seeing visions realized, in seeing people equipped and released and encouraged into the path that you actually have for them, Lord. We pray that Hope Community will be instrumental in seeing mountains moved with audacious faith. We pray for the things that stand in front of us as a community, Lord, and we believe in faith that they can be moved in Jesus' name. We set our hearts on the things of you, God. We start to pray in for revival, Lord, that there could be a great move of God wherever it is. Maybe it's in our family, Lord. Maybe it's in our local schools, Father. Maybe it's this whole community and beyond, Father, that you could pour out your Spirit in such a powerful way, Father, that many, many would come to know you, Lord that churches would start to be filled, that leadership would start to hear your voice and follow you with great faith, Father, that finances would be released into the places where you require them, Lord. Provision would flow for those who are living in lack, Father. Great things can happen in your name, Lord. And so we just declare this truth today, Father. We thank you for the callings. We thank you for the visions. We thank you for the things that you're inspiring right now, Holy Spirit. Stir our faith up, I pray, mighty God. Stir our faith up as a church, Lord. Father, for those who are lost right now, for those who are feeling hopeless, Father, for the spirit of suicide that sits around this community, Father, we pray that you would come and break that off, Lord, that there will be people in this very room today, Father, that you have anointed and appointed to be a part of that process in Jesus' name, Father. That our community would be a place of life and life abundant in Jesus' name. I pray this. Amen.